In today's video, I've got some bad news, but some good news. Let's get stuck into it. Alright, welcome back to the channel. Bit of a vlog style video today. I alluded to this video in our last episode on the exhaust mods, but uh, many of you have asked me, you know, where's Clooney and when's it coming back and all the rest of it. Well, many of you are new subscribers to the channel. You don't even know what Clooney is or where it's come from or what's been done to it. So a little bit of a level set here. So Clooney is our 2015 VF Redline SSV Commodore. Come out with a standard six litre. I put an LS7 427 engine in it out of the W427 uh, Commodore HSV. Um, put a large cam in it, stage four, stage five, big lumpy thing. It's got a 2650 positive displacement supercharger, um, but our engine is still running you know, the standard internals. Um, LS7's have got amazing heads in them, standard bottom end, you know, it's got a forged steel crank. Um, we're still running all the standard pistons, 11 to one compression with a supercharged motor, if you can believe that. And um, we've actually had the car away at our workshop, getting a whole lot of stuff done to it, roll cage fitted, getting it all fitted out to become a fully dedicated race car and track car. And we also at the time decided to put a fuel system in it. And you know, that's so we can run E85 and obviously keeping up with the, it's a big air pump in that, that engine now. So running seven liters with a big positive displacement blower, we had to throw more fuel at it. So we've done that too. And then we were running up on the dyno, just about to get it to be ready. And um, we've hurt the engine. So uh, let's uh, tell you what hurt means. Get stuck into it right now. All right, so things were going swimmingly. We had it up on the dyno. It was uh, revving to its heart's content. Uh, we probably won't tell you what it was revving to, but it was a lot. And uh, it was pretty loud, all around Mitchell. And um, yeah, we were seeing big numbers, you know, well north of, you know, 740, getting close to 750 rear wheel kilowatts of the hubs there. And we were we were powering on. And um, after one of the power runs, um, it made a bit of a pop sound. And um, we don't have any footage of it, unfortunately. So I'm just sort of having to share with you what happened in, in hindsight here. And, uh, and then obviously when we turn it back on, turn it off, it was um, blowing out one of the spark plugs. So that led us to believe there was something going on there. And obviously we did a compression test and um, yeah, some of our worst fears were confirmed actually. Um, not as bad as what you might think, um, but yeah, one of, our, one of the cylinders is down in compression, all the rest of them were okay. So it was just one. And um, on further investigation, pull the motor out, pulled the heads off and uh, we found a, a broken land on one of the top of the pistons here. I'm sharing you with a photo at the moment. It's not the photo, but it's an example of what's happened here. So it was almost like a, a crescent moon shaped little piece off the top of the piston. And um, yeah, that broke off and uh, ended up through the exhaust valves and out the other end and uh, probably on its way to Flemington Park at the moment. So um, it, it vaporized that poor little piston. And um, but thank God, we didn't, you know, detonate the piston and end up things in the oiling system and it, that didn't happen. So we can confirm that. So we've got a broken piston and um, that little piece of metal went up, hit an exhaust valve, bent that, and it's also uh, chewed out some of the, the face of the head too. So um, we'll tell you all about what we're gonna do from this point, but thank God we haven't ruined the engine. We've caught it just in time. And obviously, as soon as we heard that noise, um, yeah, we shut him off and um, did some exploratory uh, investigation to see what the hell, what we were dealing with. Um, when we also found out the uh, our little piston had broken off, um, it's also cracked in two parts, the inside of the bore. So not all the way through the sleeve into the into the block, thank God. Um, and I'm sharing you a photo with, with another LS1 block that I've got at the moment. Um, that did crack the sleeve and, and crack the block as well. Otherwise, we could have been up for a whole new block, um, but that's not the case. So um, anyway, that's the bad news. The good news is coming right now. Okay, on with the good news. The good news is we can save our seven liter block. Thank goodness for that. There ain't too many of those getting around anymore. Um, 
we are going to have to get rid of our pistons. And at the same time, even though my titanium conrods are very exotic, we'll be getting rid of those too. And the reason we're doing this is we're going a fully forged rotating assembly to match our forged steel crank. So what does that mean? We're going to go with some CP Carrillo forged pistons and we're going to lower our compression. You've got to remember we're running 11 to ones with the standard motor, which is, um, I'm really, oh Fred, really pushing the envelope there, Fred. Uh, with the supercharger and uh, running the boost we were. Um, but anyway, we're going to drop the compression with the Carrillos. We're going to go with an Oliver forge rod, and that's going to be a bulletproof assembly there. Like, I had the opportunity then, do I go a, you know, a fully forged crank? But I've already got one in the LS7, so it's a steel forged crank. So we're going to stick with the stock crank, forge conrods, forge pistons, and then obviously we're going to um, go up into the headwork and not only fix our bent valves, but the LS7s have got a, a notorious valve drop issue, and it's due to one of the weaknesses, but it's also, also a strength, that they've got sodium-filled exhaust valves. Notorious for failing. So at the same time as fixing the one that bent, we're gonna get new exhaust valves, and we're, um, we're gonna ditch the sodiums and go with another item there as well. But our inlets are all good, and from my understanding, the inlets are titanium as well, so this motor's got some very exotic bits in it, just quietly. Um, we're able to rescue and salvage our heads. The LS7 heads are intact, albeit we're going to have to deck and uh, machine the, the face of the head and get rid of a bit of chatter marks that are there from that little piece of piston that went up and knocked the head and did, did a little bit of damage on the inside of the, the dome. But all in all, it's okay. So he's probably saying to me, forged, you know, assembly here, Fred, what's next? Well, we're going to up the boost. And uh, that's because we can. Um, you know, we're very limited running factory sort of style boost around that sort of, you know, 10 PSI sort of territory, obviously with our 11 to 1s. And um, yeah, we didn't want to push things even though you know, it did break, but that's all good. Anyway, we're going to be able to run up to 16, 18 PSI. We're going to run a different um, drive assembly for the blower, different pulleys. And um, yeah, so that, that should be very interesting, actually. So um, we're expecting a material uplift in power up from 740. Um, not that Clooney needed any more grunt, just quietly. You know, I've got to be a little bit careful here around the use of this car. It's actually a track car, and a lot of people think that um, I'm going to be spearing off on every corner, but it's a moderation of the right foot, as they say. It's all good, but um, I tell you what, hopefully with Wakefield still open, that thing's going to be rocketing down the straight there, and if I think it can get to 220 quite quickly, but um, yeah, I don't want to test the brakes too much more than hitting a top speed of 220 and then coming into turn one and turn two. But going up the hill, it's going to be an absolute torque monster. And on the back straight as well, it's going to be um, it's going to be very cool. Other mods we're doing at the same time, we're just going to stick with the big 110 mil throttle body that I've got. Um, I've got a spare 102 mil Nick Williams one there that we're going to put on the six litre. And the only other mob that I didn't mention there is obviously we've got to fix those those poor old uh, uh, sleeves in my block. And uh, you're going to go with some dart and sleeves and they're very exotic too. So, um, you know, I had an option there of going to a full, you know, do I go a cast iron block? But it's not a drag car and it's not going to be a turbocharged thing running, you know, 30, 40 pounds of boost in, 16, 18 PSI at most through the supercharger. And yeah, so we're just going to re-sleeve the block. And um, yeah, I've seen some photos of these Darton sleeves and we're sending off to a place in Melbourne to get done and um, it should be very nice. And uh, the only other reliability mold that's gonna go along with all this too is we're fitting in an, a, um, an oil cooler as well. So my LS7 previously had the dry sump. Um, we've converted it to wet sump. Um, you know, big oil capacity. We've got a you know big sump there, but we really wanna investigate a, into an oil cooler. Depending on how that goes, we'll put one on the VE uh, race car as well. So um, never had an oil cooler before, and another mod that young Gary on the channel has shared with us with his uh, his little Datsun. So um, that will be all good, and um, and that's about it. You know, We're, we probably will run it up on the tune on E85, but then obviously I'll be running around on 98 when Clooney comes back, and um, hopefully that will be it. All right, so timeline for all this. Hopefully our block comes back from Melbourne by the sort of start of September. All the bits have already arrived here. We've got our pistons coated. We're going to put all the whole rotating assembly in together, get up on the dyno again, and uh, more power, baby. And then let's see how we go. So um, we're going to give you lots of videos coming up of the engine assembly process. Um, we're going to show you, obviously, the dyno runs. And then hopefully um, we'll do our shakedown run probably at Maroolan, um, at the Pheasant Wood circuit. 
uh, just with everything that's happening with Wakefield at the moment, we uh, we can't rely on that. And then we'll, um, again, we're not going to go for lap times at uh, Marulin. We're just going to get in there and shake it down with um, with Clooney and just sort of see if we have any gremlins, see if we can sort anything out and, uh, and go from there and adjust the tune if we need to, but otherwise just send it. On that note, don't do it for Dale, do it for Batman. Catch you later.